When factoring in utility and asking price, digital watches in many ways offer their own unique charm while also being more feature rich compared to more traditional watch options. Sure, not everyone is going to have a widespread collection of digital watches, but if you're in this game for long enough, you should probably give a digital watch a try. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a long list, a broad overview of some of the leading digital watches on the market in 2023. Just for some ground rules to begin, no smart watches on this list. We're gonna be looking at all different price ranges. And then in addition to that, what we're gonna also do is reference retail prices. I know for many of these watches, you can get them in a wide variety of different ranges, depending on where you're at in the world and what seller you go to. I'm just gonna use retail prices as a good, just universal way of setting the expectation because things also do change in the future when it comes to both availability and price. And before we jump into this video, if you're looking for a great digital watch, I definitely recommend G-Shock. We have them available on our site, teddybaldasar.com. G-Shock is only going to be a small segment of what we're going to be looking at in this list. But just to reference some of the key models to look at, the DW5600, classic square case design. Then you also have these newer releases, these 90 edition models, one in the DW6900 case, you have that in the yellow color format, and then a 5600 as well, at the 5610 yellow, which both of these look straight out of a 90s comic book. These are not watches that are necessarily my style, but even I think they're pretty cool. Also, you have the different analog digital display Cassie Oaks that you can go for, the GA2100s, the GM uh, B2100Ds. So those are those metal case options if you want to explore a little bit more, really solid bracelets. Check them out on teddybaldasar.com. Now we're going to go in ascending order here. And to begin, we have the Casio F91W. If there is a such thing as a cult classic from Casio, this is probably the leading one. You're talking about a watch that retails at $23 and can be found for less than that. It's probably the most attainable and cheapest watch in the world that also gets some major kudos from many collectors out there. I own one, many other collectors own one. And honestly, if they only cost $20, you probably should own one too. Coming with a small case that has a 33 3.5 millimeter diameter and a 37.5 millimeter lug to lug length. Also water resistance here of 30 meters, no nonsense features on this watch, resin case released back in 1989 and really has been a bestseller ever since. They sell millions of these things, I think every single year. And if you haven't tried one of these out yet, it's only gonna cost you $20 to do so. Just as a fair warning, there are going to be quite a few Casios on this list just because, come on, it's Casio, they dominate this whole segment. Next is a slight jump up in price. We have the Casio A168. Now this is a model family that extends from the F91W and they just look fantastic. I think it's really a great middle ground between retro design without spending a lot of money at all. You're talking about $30 here. The case size gets a slight bump up from the F91W, but relatively wears pretty similar. It does come with a nice bracelet option as well. It doesn't actually pull hair too often. I actually have the gold version on my wrist right now, which I think looks great. And I actually wear quite a bit. It was a watch when I put on for the first time. I'm like, all right, I get it, I can get down with this watch for sure. This pulls directly from the Casiotrons of the 1970s, compact lug to lug, LCD display, multiple functions, very conventional Casio model, and great looks to go along with it. For our next watch here, this one's a bit more in the weeds compared to the previous two, and that is the Casio A100. I really like the look of this watch. It's very retro, 1970s, 80s in terms of its design style. Small in terms of its case size, 32.7 millimeters with that diameter. A little bit longer on the lug to lug end of 40.7 millimeters. But really what I like about this watch is just it feels like it is from a different era and represents it well. It's actually based on the F100 from the late 1970s, debuted on Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley in the movie Alien. So any sci-fi fans will love this one, especially it has this retro multicolor button format. And now after talking about this, I kind of want to get one for myself. Now, one of the most elusive complications in the world of mechanical watchmaking is a world timer. It's usually very complicated. It was popularized by many of the creations of Patek Philippe. But what if you wanted to get one for around $30? That might seem like a ludicrous question to ask, but it is actually possible with the Casio AE1200. So this is a model that comes in with a case size of 41.8 millimeters by 44.8 millimeters, so a little bit larger. The other important benefit here is the 100 meters of water resistance on this version. And for this whole model family, you are also getting some steel variants as well, which is an exceptional proposition for this price range. Now, if you had to identify a watch that could embody the essence of the 1980s, you probably could make an argument that it might be this watch. And that is the Casio Calculator CA53W. This line was originally unveiled in 1988, conventional case format that we've seen so far, but the big thing here is that yes, 
has a calculator can wear to the wrist. I believe this watch was worn on Marty McFly's wrist in Back to the Future. It's longstanding, legendary nerd watch with genuine functionality for the pre-smartwatch era. For some, it might be too much, but you cannot deny its iconic charm. Now for our next watch here, we transition over to another entry level brand and that is Timex with their Iron Man Classic. So this is a model that was released in 1984 and they worked together with the officials of the Iron Man Triathlon to develop a new digital watch to help staggering sales within the company. The Iron Man essentially just took off right away. The watch has capable water resistance and now has become utilized by athletes, Navy SEALs, nurses, and pretty much anyone needing a capable digital watch. Certainly another pillar in 1980s digital watchmaking. For our next watch here, we have a bit of a different change of pace from the digital format from Timex, and that is the Timex T80. This one resembles more of the characteristics of classic Casio retro designs. And you kind of see that across the board. It pays a lot of tributes to those early 1980s Timex models. And then also I would say like the A168, I see a lot of parallels in terms of the designs there. Uh, the bracelet's not gonna be for everybody, but it is a nice retro looking digital watch. But say you have kind of Casio money to spend and you don't want to look at a Casio, this is a nice alternative. For our next part of the list, we have the Casio G-Shocks. And I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. I have videos looking at what to know before you buy a G-Shock, what to know before you buy a Casio. So I will recommend checking out those videos because I'll go into more detail about these entire model families and collections. Uh, but to kick it off, we have to go with the DW5600. This is classic G-Shock in my mind. I don't know if there is one emblematic case from the G-Shock family that should be that model that everybody thinks of immediately. But for myself, this is typically the one that I think of, at least when thinking about the classic designs, not something like the Cassie Oak, which is a bit more contemporary. Uh, case size, 42.8 millimeters by 48.9 millimeters. This is the case that I would say could be worn by a vast majority of people out there, from someone who has a wrist smaller than mine to even the largest wrist out there. It's just a perfect sweet spot for size for so many people. 200 meters of water resistance. It's capable in pretty much any aquatic environment that you want. All the basic functions are here. You can grab one for around 40-ish dollars all the way up to full steel variations that cost over a thousand dollars. Used from everyone from suburban dads to astronauts, law enforcement to Navy SEALs. The 5600, simply put, is legendary. Rivaling the 5600 has to be the DW9052. This is another just iconic case design from G-Shock. A little bit larger in its case, it has more of this cushion style, 48.5 millimeter case size or diameter, but the lug to lug is essentially that too. It wears much smaller than you might think. 200 meters of water resistance here, has this oversized silhouette, recessed crystal design, and also a different thing to many G-Shocks, the lugs on this model actually sit on a hinge more like a traditional watch. And I think it's another good option for a wide variety of wrists out there. Now I can't mention every G-Shock here, but let's mention a couple more. We have the G-Shock GA2100. You can go for the B option that has the Bluetooth functionality. Uh, that's another one to go for. So there's a couple different variations. Just know when you see the B in the reference that it's going to indicate, at least within this family, that you are getting that Bluetooth functionality. 45.4 millimeter case size, but very compact lug to lug, very similar in wear to the 5600 case. 200 meters of water resistance, and with that octagonal design, it's been classified as the Cassie Oak in terms of its affiliation to some of those high horology case shapes that we'll see as you ascend up market. Now to say that this is going to fill the void of one of those high horology watches is quite a stretch to say the least, but in terms of delivering at the price, these watches are simply fantastic. And I think the reason why they were so popular and they have become so popular is really because they were able to meet the divide of two different types of collectors. People that love digital watches and then also people that love analog and more mechanical timepieces because they do kind of work between both of those arenas. These start around $100, you're getting a variety of functions, stopwatch, world time, multi-alarm system, calendar to the year 2099, water resistance of 200 meters, lot to like, affordable and feels youthful and a younger type of approach to the classic retro G-Shock DNA. And if you do wanna spend a little bit more, you could go for the GMB2100Ds. These are the metal case options from this family. I really like these. There's a lot of the modding community that have kind of just developed their own uh, variation of this at more attainable prices. But if you just want 
everything together really simply, don't have to worry about investigating this and just want to get a solid G-Shock and a full metal case. These are fantastic. I think they look great. I was pleasantly surprised in terms of the case architecture and how it fits on the wrist. They didn't cut any corners and I think that's good to see. In terms of the three popular variations, you have the gold tone version, then you'll have the standard stainless steel and then the blackened type of steel version as well. These do come with a solar movement on the inside and then in addition to that, also the Bluetooth functionality that could be utilized uh, with the G-Shock app. Now these next two watches are kind of a middle ground between digital watches and more of the approach to smart watches. I'm not gonna spend as much time on these because I don't have as much experience with them, but I do wanna mention them because I know some other people in the comments might be saying that I dropped the ball if I didn't. One will be with the Sunto Core. This is an all time favorite military style watch. Comes with an altimeter, a barometer and depth gauge. So you're getting a lot of coverage there in terms of very daring uh, expeditions and environments. And really is the last generation of great digitals before smart watches took over. And then you also have the Cast Casio ProTrack. These are long-standing outdoor themed Casio models that are almost as durable as a G-Shock, but you're also getting a lot more tech in the process and even getting some smartwatch functionality for certain references. For some of you watching, this might not be your jam, but if you are somebody that wants more of that adventurer style watch with a bit more of contemporary technology, you might like these as well. Now let's move into some more niche picks. And the first one here comes from a French brand. Yes, a French brand with Yema. And this is their LED Silver. Now this is a watch that I just realized existed and I think is pretty sweet in terms of its looks. Uh, you're looking at a case size of 37.5 millimeters, reasonable thickness, lug to lug of 42.5. Wears similar to some of those Casios at the beginning of this list. 100 meters of water resistance and a digital LED screen. So as I mentioned, Yama is a French brand, and this is a one-to-one -one recreation of a watch from the brand from the 1970s. Has a screw-down case back that enables that 100 meters of water resistance. And similar to many watches of that era, it has a button activated display. So it's not always on, but it looks really cool when it pops on. Has a simple sliding bracelet clasp, similar to that of the Casio A168. It's easy to size, easy to work with, and does the job. For our next watch on the list, we have the Bulova Computron. So this is a watch from the 1970s, a reissue dropped in 2019, pulling directly from a watch within Bulova's archive. I really like this one. This is a sci-fi crazy looking piece that is very much its own thing. Pretty unique case concept. Dial doesn't face straight also, which is interesting. You basically are looking, if you look at it straight down, at like this steel hood, and then if you tilt your wrist slightly, and if you're honestly looking at the inside of your wrist, so it doesn't really cause any extra strain for the actual wearer, but if you look at it, then you get to see that visible display. Like other LED watches, like I mentioned, like the Yama before, you have to push the button to display the time, which does create a little bit of this discreet under the ray type of effect that I think is cool. So now for this next watch on the list, this is a brand new release from a brand that you might be familiar with if you're into the micro sphere of mechanical watchmaking, and that is Autodromo. They've been a long-standing fixture within that whole realm as a byproduct of their racing style watches, which pull directly from retro automobiles. This is known as their Autodromo Group C. If you've seen their Group B, it's kind of like their integrated style mechanical watch. This is referencing the Group C rally cars from the years 1982 to 1993, getting that retro sizing, the retro package. I think the looks of these watches are absolutely fantastic. The pricing is rather ambitious, but as someone who's handled a lot of Autodroma products, they do a nice job. Of course, looks very similar to some other Casios on this list for multiples of the money. And simply put, I do think these look fantastic, although the price may be, again, a little bit ambitious. So for our next watch here, this might be my favorite on the entire list and is very underestimated in terms of its significance in the world of digital watches and just watches in general. And that is the Hamilton PSR. So this is a watch that pulls directly from Hamilton's archive, specifically a model known as the Hamilton Pulsar. So if you're not familiar with the Hamilton Pulsar, it really essentially was the first digital watch. So pretty much everything on this list owes kudos to what this watch was able to develop in the 1970s. The weird thing about this watch, when you're looking at the price today, you're thinking about, oh, it's $745 
dollars for a digital watch. That's a lot. Well, when this watch was first released, looking at that original Pulsar, I think it retailed for over $2,000, which with inflation for today would equate to over $12,000. So this was a watch that was positioned as a luxury timepiece. I believe Gerald Ford wore one in the office. So it was very much a watch of that era that was emblematic of high-end luxury, which is crazy and shows the times and how much they have changed. But the other great thing about this watch and the design is it's simply fantastic in terms of its case finish. Its bracelet is great. The faceting on the side of the sapphire is beautiful. 100 meters of water resistance. And there's simplicity to this watch as well that I really like. One button and it will just light up the backlight of that red popping numerals to tell you the time. There are a couple different variations. You have a full black PVD version as well as the matrix edition with its green light. So a lot to get lost in. More people need to wake up about the historical significance of this watch and this family. So now let's do some stretch picks. Let's get into some luxury digital watches. And for some of you might be like, okay, that's an oxymoron, but there are some great options here. And first we'll start with the Breitling Aerospace Evo Titanium. So Breitling, probably one of the leaders when it comes to digital approaches in higher end watchmaking. This watch comes with a 43 millimeter case, a lug to lug of 51 millimeters, a little on the larger side, but you're getting great specs across the board, 100 meters of water resistance, high performance quartz crystal, sapphire crystal on top. Now this is a specific aviation timepiece, no surprise there if you're familiar with Breitling, including one 100th of a second chronograph, countdown timer, second time zone, alarm, audible time signal and calendar. The case and bracelet is very much in alignment with its price tiers, so you're not making any compromises on that side. And the super quartz caliber is accurate to plus or minus 15 seconds per year. So basically one second off from perfect time a month or just about. And then for our last watch on the list, we have the Omega Speedmaster Skywalker X33. So this is a model that was created for space exploration in mind, comes in with a 45 millimeter case size, a lug to lug of 48 millimeters, and a Quartz Omega 5619 movement on the inside. The Skywalker is the evolution of the original X33 design format released in 1998, used by astronauts. The analog digital display comes with a titanium case, has a wide variety of aviation and space functionality, and the X33 still appears to be standard standard issue for US astronauts. And Omega was known to sell these directly to military pilots with engraved squadron insignias on the case back. So pretty cool. But all right guys, that is my list looking at some great digital watches to consider for your collection. As I mentioned at the beginning, I can't go through every single digital watch, uh, but I did want to put together a nice list. This is a world of watches that was not something that I got into when I first was getting into watches. It's interesting because I started collecting just different, more traditional mechanical watches. And then I started looking back at some other digital watches and I've kind of enjoyed going back to looking at some of these just because they get, get me in touch with the rudimentary forms of why I love watchmaking. They're not necessarily always gonna be my cup of tea compared to other people out there, but uh, I think digital watches are very cool. I think every single collector should at least give a digital watch a try at least once because there's always those days where you wanna put one on the wrist. But all right guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer, how we're able to fund all of these videos, the productions, it's all done through the store. We don't have the brands pay us to make any videos. So this is really how we're able to make all this happen and really would appreciate the business. I know you can buy a watch anywhere, but again, really would appreciate the business. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.